Welcome to Career Insights. The Career Insights series features local industry professionals engaged in conversation with students and recent graduates about career planning and job opportunities in Polk County, Florida. Hi, I'm Patty Gander. Uh, I'm the uh, facilitator of today's uh, session. Um, we're really happy to have everybody on board, all of the high schools, as well as all of our presenters today um, to kick off uh, Manufacturing Month. We have uh, Marshall from Createc. Okay, so my name is Marshall Hurley. I work at Createc Machine and Design. Uh, I, what I do here is I am the engineering manager and customer service manager. Uh, and uh, let me show you what it is that we do. Mostly what we do, we make uh, drilling and tapping machines. Uh, so if you want to put a uh, thread in a nut or a bolt or on a bolt, uh, we make the machines that do that mostly for other companies, companies that are working with um, automotive, uh, aerospace, a lot of the fastener industry. That's uh, kind of what we do. Uh, so this one is tapping a conduit nut and I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it. And actually that looks like a test run. There's no actual tap in there. As you can see it's feeding from a bowl feeder, feeds down the track, and then it's being tapped at the end. All right, you should be able to see another video now. Okay. This one's got a little bit more automation in it. So this one, basically the nuts being picked up, he's got a pair of jaws that grab it, it comes over, it gets tapped. And then that pair of jaws, once it gets to the right place, will drop it. So this one is being drilled. Here's a drill here. And there's another one on the other side. This is uh, basically just a, uh, a bolt that's upside down and we're drilling a, um, a hole through the, the, the corners of the hex. And as you can see, the robot is uh, turning it in between. And then it brings in a new, a new part. So that, those are the kinds of machines we're producing here. Uh, some of them uh, have quite a bit of automation and then we have ones that have uh, very little automation. Uh, we also make uh, tapping heads, or if you've seen a drill press before, uh, it just basically takes a drill press and turns it into a tapping machine. It controls the descent of the tap so that you don't tear up your tap. Uh, and that's kind of the most simple thing we make all the way up to something like the video I just showed you, which is basically you pour a bunch of parts into a bowl feeder and you tell it what you want it to do, and then you walk away from it and let it go on its own. As far as the process and the different types of uh, jobs that we have here, usually we have a customer come to us and they either bring a part or they bring part drawings. So this is several different parts. And basically the customer comes to us and says, here's what we're trying to do. You know, here's all your specs. This one is uh, 1024 tap, you know, depth, all that kind of stuff. And based on that, we do the math and figure out what is the best way of going about uh, processing this part, whether it's drilling it or tapping it or whatever else. Once we have that, uh, we get together as a group. We have a meeting every um, Monday. Anyway, we send a quotation questionnaire that asks some simple questions. Uh, you know, what are you trying to do? Do you want this to be automated? Do you want it to, do you want to load it by hand? You know, do you want extra processes? Do you want to check the threads at the end or something like that. And uh, so we have all those questions to get a good idea of what the customer wants. We go through that with the customer to make sure we're all on the same page. And then we put together a concept of what this machine should look like. Uh, once we put together the concept, we try and basically price it out based on what, what we think needs to go into it. Uh, we put together a price, we talk about that internally, and then we go back to the customer and we, you know, we give them the price and also give them an idea of here's how we see this going. Here's how this works. And, you know, customers, sometimes uh, a customer that may not have a huge amount of knowledge will say, that's great. Let's go with that. And then other customers that have more knowledge say, well, we would like this instead, or can we add this or can we take that away? And so we work with them to get an idea of what the machine's going to look like and therefore what it's going to cost, what features it's going to have. 
Once we do that, uh, I have an engineering meeting with my engineers and they go through and they put together a package that gives a good idea of exactly what does this look like. This is a concept of a machine much like the last video I showed you. They're not always this pretty, but this gives the, uh, the customer a very good idea of what the physical layout of their machine is. So you've got a bowl feeder, you've got a track, this gray thing back here is the robot, your two drill heads, there's an electrical box over here, coolant tank, all that sort of stuff. So they can see exactly what this thing looks like. A lot of times we will send them a 3D model in SolidWorks so that they can manipulate it, pull dimensions off of it and stuff like that. The purpose of that is to make sure that everybody understands exactly what they're getting. And then once they get this whole thing designed out, my engineers go through and they will detail, that is put dimensions to and tolerances to any parts that are not previously created parts. Uh, we try and reuse parts if we can, uh, but if not, we make a new one, they go through, they make the drawing so that I can send it out to my guys on the shop and they can make that particular part. We have lathes, we have mills, and then we also use some outside vendors uh, for things like that. And then once they put it together, they will test it out. They go through and they, uh, we do the programming. If it's a simple machine, we do programming in-house. If it's a little bit more complicated, if there are servos involved in controlling the motors, we will send that. Uh, we bring in um, a local programmer from Plant City to help us out with that. Then we go through and we test it. And we invite the customer out and we let them uh, decide what the parameters of the test are. You know, usually it's maybe uh, a day's worth of whatever part they're running or they want to see, hey, I want to see you run this part and then change to that part. We kind of let them set the schedule and then we run the machine through that and uh, make sure it checks out to their specs. And then usually there's some kind of extra they want. We made a machine last year where going through the whole design process, they didn't really mention safety and they got here and we went through the testing and they said, hey, safety's been all over us. You know, we need to see these things. So we had to spend an extra two, three weeks updating the safety uh, to make sure it made, met their specifications. Once we do that, uh, the customer gives us a thumbs up and we send them the, uh, we create up the machine and send it to them. Thanks, Marshall. Appreciate it. Um, cool. Nicole with uh, Coca-Cola. Good morning, everyone. Nicole Angoni, work for Coca-Cola uh, North America in Auburndale, Florida one of our largest plants in North America. When I think about manufacturing and, and from the lens of, of someone in high school, you know, there's the obvious initial plan and the actual production facility, but there's so much that, that goes into our total supply chain, particularly at Coca-Cola. Uh, and there's so many different opportunities and different skill sets that, that could be used within, within our business. So where, where could you fit in or what are the different opportunities that exist with, within the supply chain today? Um, and just picking on a couple of them, for example, you have R&D and quality. Those are typically science-related uh, technical skill sets. And we have folks that have started with just an interest in that uh, with high school degrees and then progressed and, and continued their education in the technical field. You also have um, procurement and planning, which uh, get into a lot of different financial contracts or get into some of the analytics around uh, planning and sourcing and, and some of that skill set is, is obviously very different. And then we have the typical, uh, what you would commonly think for our location, logistics and production and engineering. Being in manufacturing, the biggest thing for me is, you know, you're a part of a team. We are always every day uh, working on, on solving problems, working together. The benefits are great. It's a fast paced environment at our, at our facility, particularly we're 24 seven. It's cutting edge and technical. We're talking about the digital factory. We're talking about, um, we're, we're looking currently right now at augmented reality and virtual reality opportunities for training and creating digital twins for some of our equipment so that we uh, can better analyze it and, and, and create a digital factory. Career development is definitely a, a positive. I started in the industry uh, as a temp, another manufacturer for Nestle here in Florida. 
and I have progressed my career um, all the way to an operations director here at the Main Street facility, which is, like I said, the largest Coca-Cola facility in North America. So there's really so many different opportunities, and I'll share more of some of the things we do around career development, particularly at Coca-Cola. And then I always say it's the create, build, make in so many different ways, right? I mean, you hear from the folks before me, from some of the machine machining of parts all the way to food to to all sorts of different products that, that we have today. Um, and all of that has some sort of supply chain and some sort of manufacturing element that, has, that goes into it. So I talked a little bit about the quality opportunities, but this is just one of many opportunities that exist within our plant. We have a lot of tiered roles and opportunities. So entry level, you can come in with a high school education and you can either independently pursue outside of work or pursue dirt, uh, through one of our many opportunities within the plant, technical uh, training or leadership training to help you on a journey to some of these other roles. And we have seen, uh, particularly in my location, folks actually take this progression um, all the way to QA manager. In fact, we have a couple of folks that are currently working as regional quality managers where they travel to the various different sites and they're, they're in a corporate role that started here as a QA tech in our location. We do a lot of maintenance development programs at Main Street. So you may start off as a production operator, you have an affinity to move more into the technical or maintenance roles. And we obviously are looking for that skill set as an industry, it's very difficult to find. And so we have a lot of in-house opportunities for folks to pursue more learning, you know, continued education and on the job training so that they can pursue opportunities within maintenance. And here's just an example of, you know, four tiered path that we have in the plan. So we call it the tech one operator basic program. So that's for any operators or mixing blending operators as well and production operators in the plant. There's a variety of online coursework that they do. Uh, and then there's uh, competencies assessments in four different areas. Then they can move into an advanced program, which has more online coursework, also has um, our SME and technical folks on site do, do a competency assessment and on the job training as needed. And there's a financial incentive if, if people reach that level. And then of course, to make it all the way into a full maintenance uh, mechanic role, uh, there's an, an additional tier and then for folks that make it to maintenance, we have some that move further into automation and there's another track that will bring you into the automation roles. So I don't feel like that, you know, you need to be at tech three automation on day one. There's a lot of opportunities uh, within the plant to progress into these roles uh, and further your career. We are just a shy of a million square foot under roof. It's a, it's a pretty large facility. Not many people know that we're we're here in Auburndale. We are a company-owned location. So Coke is a franchise model and we have our franchise partners in Florida with Coca-Cola Beverages Florida that produce a lot of the carbonated soft drinks for, for Florida. We are the Coca-Cola company. So we, we don't produce any um, bottle or produce beverages. We do chill distribution here at our location. Uh, we have 120 million case capacity. We'll probably exceed our budget this year of 94 million. We have 625 employees, nine production lines. And uh, if anyone goes over the, the overpass that you can kind of see there, you'll see our pretty massive drop lot. Uh, that's the backside of our facility and, and our warehouse and logistics team does about 200 to 250 trucks a day. We have a warehouse on site that has 30,000 chilled uh, pallet positions, uh, 12,000 ambient, 25 dock doors. It's it's a massive warehouse. We employ about 120 people just in the warehouse alone. And, and that's also a, a great entry level opportunity uh, for folks to come in and, and drive a forklift and then progress further into our, into our operation. This is the main bread and butter of what we produce here. So simply all of our simply products, we make it in three different sizes. And you can see the variety of different flavors and SKUs that we make in this package. It represents 65% of what we do at Main Street. So that, that budgeted number in the beginning of my presentation, 65% of my budget is based on, on simply 52 ounce, which is family size carafe that we, we produce. If you buy this carafe anywhere in the US, there's a chance, there's a pretty strong probability that it's coming right here from Auburndale, Florida. 88% of what you find in the market comes from this location at Main Street. And we make it in a variety of different pack sizes. The single serve products that we make, uh, we have any, we have 
8 ounce, 340 ml, 32 ounce. We have the, these in a variety of flavors as well. And this makes up about 26% of my uh, budget of volume. And we're the sole producer of these products for all of the United States. Here's a little overview of how we produce chilled products. So we receive ingredients in tankers. If you drive by the plant, you'll see these large storage silos that we have. We have 900,000 gallons of storage capacity on site for chilled juice. It's just a wide spot in the line. We don't store anything long-term. We blend the juices to make a consistent taste and flavor profile. We'll pasteurize uh, for food safety and then we'll cool the product down. We'll fill it cold and we'll pack it. We'll store it cold. We also produce our own containers here. So we have uh, inline uh, blow molding and uh, we do that on all of our chilled lines at Main Street. For us to be successful in any of these products, uh, we need a network of juice. And that's sort of uh, why the plant is located here in Auburndale, Florida. It's very strategic to where our juice uh, network uh, is. So here on this map, you can see a variety of different partners that we have uh, between Peace River, Catrali, and Southern Gardens that produce not from concentrate orange juice or other juices and distribute them throughout the state of Florida. So anything that is bottled under Simply Umbrella is made from not from concentrate juice. If you're buying a 100% juice product, there is nothing else added. If you're buying a juice drink, then there would be perhaps sugar or water or other, or other flavors added. From Florida, where we store a lot of our juice close to our plant, and we receive it from all over the U.S. if it's not orange. So apple juice will come from the northwest uh, and the northeast of the United States and Canada. A lime and lemon, for example, might come from California. We also have some juice that comes from Mexico, Brazil. And so we'll import all of that juice and we'll store it here locally in Florida so that we can pull it just in time for what we need. And fun fact, um, during fresh juice season, uh, you we could have an orange that's picked off a tree and processed down the street at Catrali and put in a bottle within 24 hours. And you can see our partners, Catrali, they are located down the street from us. And we do have a pipeline, two pipelines actually, that are buried underneath the road there that will pump orange juice directly from their facility to ours anywhere from 80 to 180 gallons per minute. And uh, this obviously has a great sustainability factors, but in, in convenience and production, but this basically allows a lot of trucks to be off the road, hauling juice in between our two facilities every day. We do some other products in Main Street, but it's a small percentage. We have one hot film, one aseptic line. Those of you may have seen, we partnered, Coca-Cola partnered with Body Armor and, and purchased those brands here in the last year or two. So we do produce some Body Armor products out of Main Street. Powerade, Minimi Juices to Go, these are all hot fill products. And these products are juices that are typically from concentrate. We have a bag in a box line, which produces the fruit base for McDonald's. So if you go through any McDonald's drive-thru and you get the smoothies there, the fruit base is produced here. They also have some other suppliers as well, but we, we produce a good portion of their volume and then they'll mix it to make these smoothie products. So I mentioned a little bit about the fact that, that we are um, owned by North America. And then you also have your franchise bottlers. There's, there's a variety of different franchise bottlers throughout the U S that, that do a whole bunch of different things. Um, and you also have some different company owned locations. So for example, we have Fairlife, um, which is a milk producing uh, company that Coke has recently, recently purchased. And then you also have um, these juice products like we produce here at Main Street. So a variety of opportunities. Uh, and if anyone is interested further, you know, feel free to reach out to me or to uh, look for some opportunities on careers at coca-cola.com and you'll be able to to look at the variety of different opportunities that are out there. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, you touched on something too that uh, some other uh, of our presenters have touched on. And as the self-employed ambassador to manufacturing, I make sure people know that as well, that manufacturing is the industry where we promote from within. So you can come in at, you know, at like myself, I came in working on an assembly line and I finished my career in manufacturing as a vice president of operations. And that's not an unusual story. That's a typical story in manufacturing that uh, if you want to grow and do more, manufacturing likes to promote and likes to educate. I want to thank you very much. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful manufacturing month. <laughs>